A Song of Purple and Gold, brought to you by Capital Partners, a full-service lobbying and public relations firm here to remind the good folks of Southeasteros to be prepared, because session is coming. The Swamp King trudges through an ancient marsh, one where the old magic still holds sway. He seeks a monster of legend, devourer of Catholic children and eater of flesh. The Swamp King thinks back to what led him to this cursed place. We find the king at the morgue with Archmaester Hanegriff. They huddle together, looking over a mutilated body. Poor Lady Nathane, dead. Nathane lies on the table, with the unmistakable wounds of a wolf's jaw covering her corpse. Poor Lady Nathane. Gone before she ever had any part in this story, really. Your Grace, never have living eyes laid sight upon wounds such as these. I fear this is an ancient evil, far older and more powerful than the seven gods of the Holy Gumbo. Make no mistake, Your Grace, this is the work of the Rugaru. This cannot be. It is said that when the Rugaru returns, the end times are at hand. The Ruglarok! Yes, yeah, indeed it does. We need answers. There may be a way. Archmaester Hanegriff falls lifeless to the floor. Henley! Henley, what's wrong? Archmaester Hanegriff's body begins to float. His limbs spread eagle stretched to the point of breaking. His crimson bloodshot eyes roll back in his head. He begins to speak. Ed, I see you. I hope you found my invitation pleasing. Much to discuss, you and I, Swamp King. If you seek to avoid me, my next victim will get your attention. Hello. The Swamp King's attention is jerked back to the present. He stands alone atop an ancient pirogue of Port Fouchon. A growl emanates from the depths of the brown water. His head begins to swim as the whispers begin. What you cannot handle, you Get out of my head! One team! One heartbeat! He focuses in on his beating heart, and by sheer force of will, the Swamp King silences the voices. Impressive. The Swamp King whips around and comes face to face with the snarling snout of a wolf. Its bloody, razor-sharp teeth bared in a rictus grin. And you must be the Swamp King everyone's talking about. Yes. You've got the gods in quite an uproar, seeking to upset the natural order of things, thinking to change your people's fate. I am king so that my people can choose their fate. King, he says. King of what, exactly? A thatched barn, where brigands drink in the rink, and their brats roll on the floor amongst the dogs. What are you king of? Whatever you want. The fool he is, who seeks to distract me. I know who I am. 
I am the son of Mike Six, king of the swamps and ruler of Louisiana. And I am here to invoke the ancient challenge. The ancient challenge? Then surely you must know the ancient custom. Have you brought me tribute? The Swamp King reaches inside of his cloak and produces a dark amber vial. I bring you the blood of a virgin. I bring you the blood of Lady Moscona. The Rougarou's nostrils flare and its eyes go wide as it lunges for the vial, greedily drinking the blood in a flash. (laughs) That was delicious. That person has definitely never had sex with anyone. Now, what is it that you seek? I seek answers. I seek to know why the Rugnarok is here and what it means for my people. You ask the wrong questions, mortal. It is not why, but how. You have brought forth the Rugnarok. The Kingdom of Louisiana was never supposed to have offensive success. In the shadows long ago, a deal was made. The LSU offense would forever remain stagnant and ineffective, and in return, the ancient god's bloodlust would be sated with the sacrifice of children, virgins, and methods. No, who would make such a deal? Who would betray his fellow humans for such selfish gain? Search your heart, King. You know of who I speak. The Crimson Emperor. Does his evil know no limits? And the pact held strong for many years. That is, until the rise of your Lord Commander, Sir Burrow. I fear his success has shattered the pact and roused the anger of the gods. They now seek to destroy Commander Burrow and the entire kingdom of Louisiana. No, I must warn my people. The Swamp King turns to run, only to find his way barred by the hideous Wolfman. As we speak, an army marches on Death Valley, led by Lord Malzon. The plainsmen claim to hate the Emperor, but little do they know that they do his bidding. Like puppets on a string, they march upon Death Valley, ready to burn it to the ground. A shame you won't be there to save them. Huh? Suddenly, the Rougarou lashes out to the Swamp King, claws flashing, jaws snapping furiously at the King's neck. Lord Ogeron barely avoids having his throat sliced open as he falls back into the water. As he sinks to the depths, the Swamp King knows his life is over. However, he hurts not for himself, but rather for his people. He could not save them. As the Rougarou closes in for the kill, the Swamp King accepts his fate. I'm sorry, Father. I have failed you. Now, prepare to die. Suddenly, a light pierces the darkness. From the heavens, the purple and golden chariot descends. Driven by the glorious visage of Mike Six, the ghostly figures of Billy Cannon, Tommy Casanova, Kevin Mawai, Kevin Falk, Glenn Dorsey, Patrick Peterson, and Tyron Matthew fly to the Swamp King's rescue. Run, Swamp King. And save your people. Remember, you are not alone. Your tiger brothers stand with you. No, father! I am tired of running! I will run no more! Not from the Rougarou! Not from the gods! And not from Lord Malzon and his pretend tigers! I am the monster in the dark, and I do not fear death. Death fears me. The Swamp King charges back into the fray, and imbued with the holy energy of the tiger, he grabs the Rougarou by his jaws, and with a guttural yell, he tears the demon apart. Go, tiger!